Hello YouTube and welcome to Heathen Hacks. This is the second part of last week's Doggy Water Bowl Refill Indicator slash Monitor video. I suggest watching that video first before watching this one if you haven't watched it yet. On part 1, we talked about the concept, created a prototype and finally soldered the components to the PCB which was provided by PCB Way. Check out their sponsorship program for engineering students on the description below or just type www.pcbway.com slash sponsor.html to get sponsored on your first project. Let's go! Today we are going to measure our components, transfer the measurements into Tinkercad and make a sort of 3D mockup of what the final device would look like when it's installed on our project box. After that, we will proceed on dremeling a cutout for the LCD, then drill holes for the reset button, buzzer, LEDs, USB cable, and switch. Alrighty then, let's start measuring stuff. The LCD is about 71.5 mm by 24.5 mm. The switch, including the washer and seal, is about, well, let's just say 17.5. Now, this is the drill bit that we need to use. It's called a step bit or step drill bit. Let's see if we can drill a hole with 17.5 mm of diameter. Alright, it's on the second to the last step. The reset button is about 11.5. Buzzer is 11.8, well, let's just say 12. So after measuring and transferring the measurements into Tinkercad, here is the mock-up. I have not recorded the entire process of course. It's only a rectangular cutout here but I will drill a hole for the USB cable. Let's proceed on masking the project box, so we could make our marks for the cutouts and holes which I will no doubt mess up sooner or later. Okay, as you can see here, I messed it up a little bit, but it's okay. That will be covered up by a sticker later. Now, we will need to do some drilling. We will need to drill about 11.5 millimeters for the reset button. Okay, let's see. Hmm, too small. Still not big enough. Now it's too big. Great! Now for the buzzer. Then for the LEDs. And last but not the least, for the USB header and switch. And that's it. 
So now we need to attach the PCB onto the bottom of the project box using hot glue. Well basically just use hot glue on everything really. See that? Now, the LCD looks like it fits perfectly. Okay, let's see if we haven't damaged anything during the assembly. Alright, still working as it intended. Now, what I'm going to do is practice on a different container just to see if the measurements I did is good enough for the switch. I mean, I only have one chance to drill the doggy bowl since I don't have any spare for that, so I have to make it count. If I make even the slightest mistake while drilling the hole, that could screw up the whole thing and make it leak water. The measurement is 17.5 millimeters. The original measurement is actually 18 ish. I just took the 0.5 so it could have a better seal. Let's proceed! Looks okay. Just gonna try it on the bathroom to see if it's leaking. I'll be back. One eternity later. Okay, so I just tried it off screen and luckily it's not leaking. Now, this is our dog's water bowl fountain. Keep in mind that I haven't cleaned this yet so there may be some filthy things inside or maybe not at all. I'm just going to plug this to power it up so you guys can see how it works. See, that's the water that is being pumped by the submersible pump at the bottom. Then the water goes down through the slits and passes through a filter then gets pumped back up again. This is really useful. Our dog's last water bowl sometimes has some of those mosquito larvae because it's potable or clean water and it's stagnant. They can't lay eggs on this one though because the water is always moving. Here's a peek of the inside. Whoops, can't do that, almost sprayed water on the table. Okay, let's open it up, but just a little bit. Nah, I'll just turn it off. So that's the pump. Water goes through this tube here, then onto the daisy-like flower up top. Then down these leads here, then to the filter and back up again. 
I've just cleaned it and took the water out for the drilling process. So let's start drilling. I'm going to drill it slowly to avoid making the hole larger than I need it to be. Okay, let's see if it would fit. The switch fits perfectly. Now let's see if it would still fit when the seal is added. Nope, too small. Let's drill it a bit more. Let's try it again. Still too small. Okay, how about now? Alright, fits like a glove. Now let's add the nut to close the seal, clean the bowl, and then try it again. After that, I'm going to connect the switch to the Arduino. Alright, let's power it up. There, the refill count is still at zero because I haven't added any water yet. Now, I'm going to attach this hose to the pump. The other end of this will go to a container. So, when I add the water and activate the pump, the water will go to the container and prevent spillage while draining the bowl to simulate the effect of low water volume. Here we go. Hmm, water's not enough because of the wrong orientation of the switch. Well, I'm just going to use my drinking water, I guess. If you're wondering why the refill count suddenly increased, it's because the switch is so sensitive that when I poured my drinking water into the bowl, it created some sort of small waves that caused the switch to do some bouncing-like motion. I have an idea on how to make it less sensitive, but I don't know how to code it yet. Now, let's activate the pump. There, it's working perfectly. By the way, this is not the correct orientation of the switch. I have already changed it and edited the code a few days after recording this video. So, while it's beeping, let's refill the bowl with water. Alright. Perfect! So as I have promised on the last video, we will talk about the code and I will try to explain it as simple as I can. Okay! So let's open up the project file. The links for the sources that I have looked at as inspiration and codes are in the description below. The code for the LCD came from my Arduino project. Just click around this area if you want to see it. Okay, where is it? There it is. This one. I got this from the from my third project too. Okay, let's open it up. Oops. There. See these? These uh, these the nope these these what else uh, where is it 
there these and these I got those from my third Arduino project here it is there oops there these guys okay what else uh-huh these ones now LED 1 is the green LED and LED 2 is the red one numbers 2 and 3 are for our pins digital pin number 2 and 3 buzzer RST is the reset pin for the reset button of course and this int switch in counter something switch pin const byte and what yeah those are from wait sec digital state change detection right yes those are from this one this one I mean there see that oops yes that's it and uh, what else this one yeah this uh, yep that's pretty much it and uh, what else what else what else yes right code for the buzzer oh code for the switch is this one that one the code for the buzzer is that for I got that from this one project hub mm-hmm this gun right here I did not use delay though. Now, the code for the reset button is here. Came from here. This one. And this one. Input pull up. And I believe that's it. I mean, it's only 60 lines. Pretty short so uh yeah that's all for today guys thanks for watching and see you again next week